Hello, dear student. I hope you are studying for the exam very seriously. And today we are studying biochemistry of cancer. As you know that cancer is not a death sentence, but it is a life sentence because once it is there, you have to leave it, uh, it for rest of the life. Uh, uh, in 2018, the total uh, number of cases of cancer was uh, uh, 9.6 millions in worldwide, and into uh, by the uh, twin, by the end of 2020, we may have double number of cases. Like it is up to the 20 million cases we can have by the end of this e year. So uh, we know that this is uh, uh, this is very big load uh, and burden on the health sector to combat with the life threatening disorder that is a cancer. So let's. Uh, loan biochemistry of cancer. For that, let me share my screen. So this is a biochemistry of cancer and here uh, at the end of this lecture, you should able to define and explain etiology of cancer along with the tumor marker. So here are our learning objective. First, we will uh, learn definition and etiology of cancer. In that, we will cover types of carcinogen and their mechanism. Then uh, this biochemical changes in the cancer would be explained to you. Then we uh, look for the uh, tumor marker and then a uh, few um, uh, anti-cancer drug and the mechanism we will study so question you can see asked uh, question asked so far now most of them are the short note and you can see what are the questions which are asked which uh, there is more emphasis on the carcinogen and chemical carcinogen is more often asked according to that uh, genes that is proto oncogene oncogene and even tumor marker uh, marker and its significance has been asked so let's see what is a cancer now cancer literally means Crab. You can see this is the orthopod, and this uh, even this word is derived from the cancrum. Now, this cancrum describes the swollen vein around the area. So here you can compare it's this the appendages of orthopod with the swollen vein. That is, it is the uh, blood supply. It represents the blood supply. Another name which corresponds to this cancer is the arugula. Now, this is the 10 raised to power 8 uh, proliferation of the cells. So, this together, this cancrum and arugula suggests that this is uh, this is a proliferation of the uh, normal cells. And uh, here we can we know cancer at is is an excessive abnormal incoordinate and autonomous proliferation of the cell and which is not uh, corresponding to the demand of that organ even the international union against cancer that is uicc has described cancer as a disturbance in the growth characterized by excessive proliferation of cell without apparent relation to physiological demand of the organ involved so most of the time the uh, origin of this cancerous cells are, are derived from the aberrant cell now aberrant cells they are present in everyone's body and they undergo mutation uh, and uh, division and under mutation is uh, controlled by immunosurveillance system of our body but if this um, if this mutation rate is very high and it is not getting controlled with the Im immunosurveillance of our body, then it leads to the uh, formation of proliferation uh, that is a cancer. So we know that the etiology, you know, only, only one reason cannot be sufficient for this dreaded disease. So it is a multifactorial origin. So here you can see the, what are the personal risk factors which uh, threatens us now. Uh, with threatened person to have the cancer. You know that the uh, see, uh, breast cancer, it runs in the family and first order relatives are more prone to have the cancer. Even you can uh, see the, like uh, for racial discrimination, the blacks are having low risk of uh, skin cancer why, as compared to whites. We know that uh, the incidence of cancer is high with the increasing in the age. Even diet like flavotoxin or certain uh, diet, they are carcinogenic. Even exposure of the chemicals and the hormonal status of the person, their personal risk factor for the um, can cancer. So in broad category, we have divided the uh, etiological factor in the geographic manner. Like in India, we know that the hungry cancer is common in the Kashmiri people because of the device they use to uh, protect themselves from the 
uh, cold then oral cancer is because of bitter lip chewing habits so these cancers are more common in indi indi indian india as uh, while usa and europe countries they uh, the most common cancers are ca prostate lung and colorectal cancer and ca breast in the fem in female now second most uh, etiology is the occupational relation as we all know that this uh, uh, asbestos worker they are more uh, more prone to have mesothelium uh, mesothelioma of lung even a nickel work, worker they develop to cancer lung and ionizing the, uh, the people who work with ionizing radiation they are more prone to have skin cancer residual factor we have already discussed that dark screen has a decrease uh, incidence of formation of melanoma but a positive blood group it is more related with the ca stomach so this is a residual and genetic factors are there as a etiological agent now something about alcohol alcohol high consumption of alcohol it is it leads to the carcinoma of esophagus and even hepatocellular carcinoma while smoking is uh, it leads to say, uh, carcinoma lung and even carcinoma of urinary bladder so these are the uh, different etiological factors which uh, which increases risk of a person to have the cancer now let's see what are the characteristic of tumor cell as we have already discussed in first uh, first slide that this is the incoordinate uh, excessive and abnormal proliferation of the cell that means there uh, there is a that means there is a diminished control of growth over over this or this cell normally uh, here we would like to discuss doubling time of a uh, doubling time of cells now this doubling time is the time taken for a tissue to in uh, double of its mass so in normal uh, normal organ this uh, only 1 to 2% of cells remain in the doubling uh, doubling phase but in this uh, tumor uh, in carcinoma or in tumor uh, tumor cells around 2 to 5% cell lie in the doubling doubling phase now if it is uh, it this doubling phase is up to 2% then tumor is mostly benign of na benign nature while if it is 4 to 5% of doubling uh, 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 5% of cell are in doubling time then they uh, they, they these tumor are most ma malignant now another characteristic of this is that as we all know that uh, contact inhibition is a property by which proliferating cell stop its uh, growth once they uh, come in contact with each other but here in tumor cell there is a loss of contact inhibition which leads to the formation of multilayered growth and that too in the jumbled fashion now malignant transformation is a characteristic of tumor cell now he, here the, the, it leads to the uh, less differentiation of the cell and anaplasia is cell, uh, seen in the uh, cell in the form of large large cell large nuclei nucleoli and hyperchromatic nucleus and uh, um, this is uh, even distorted cell margin so this is anaplastic changes we can see in the malignant transformation of tumor cell and it also changes the alignment of the cell which where they grow and that leads to multi layer cell along and in malignant transformation formation there is a peculiar characteristic is the presence of angiogenesis angiogenesis means synthesis of blood vessel in uh, uh, with the uh, growth of cells and this uh, blood vessel will provide nourishment to the cell so that they can grow again fast now another changes we have seen that is the alteration in the sialic acid content and which is known as a sialization so this tumor cell have raised content of n acetyl neuraminic acid which increases negative charge on these cells and because of this increased negative charges there is altered signalization of cell surface glycoprotein and that's uh, that help this cell to skip out of the immunological response now these cells uh, tumor cells also they are rich in the enzymes collagenous and streamlysing now this collagenous can easily digest collagen so these cells they can easily invade in the extracellular matrix so from the tissue they invade to the extracellular matrix and even they can reach to the adjacent periphery and uh, this is known as a metastasis even sometimes these cells uh, travel through the blood vessels and reaches to another organ 
organ to form secondary tumor and this is because of this enzymes present there now there are certain amount of metabolic alterations seen in the tumor cell actually this cell grows with with much less amount of energy so uh, uh, it needs minimal en enzyme and even it leads to alteration of enzyme so even uh, isoenzymes uh, pattern can be altered and there is more amount of glycolysis both type aerobic and anaerobic is going on in this uh, tumor so that that leads to the lactic ac acidosis and even it leads to the synthesis of few proteins which helps the growth of this um, uh, cells now these cells, cancer cells, they are said to be immortal. Now, immortal means they don't die. This is because of persistent activity of enzyme telomerase, which prevent chromosomal alteration and uh, it protect chromosome. So that's why they are immortal. Immortal. Now, coming to the uh, last property, that is the loss of apoptosis. Now, apoptosis is a programmed cell death. It is also known as a suicide of the cell, which is pre-programmed. So, it is mediated through certain genes like CFOS, P53, and retinoblastoma gene. When these genes are lost, these cells do not die, and again, it continues to proliferate and retain in the tum tumor, and that also also leads to the altered immune system and thereby they skip the lysis by the immunological agent. So these are the characteristics of tumor, tumor cell and here you can see this diagram shows you that how these cells are bigger, multi-layered and because of this collagenase they can uh, go through the base, uh, base, they can invade through the basement membrane, go to the extracellular matrix and through the blood vessel they can reach to another or organ to form the metastasis. Uh, metastasis metastasis so now let's see what are the genetic basis of cancer so in this slide we are just um, getting acquainted with the terms which we are going to use in further lecture so this what is the carcinogenesis now carcinogenesis is a process or it's a mechanism of induction of tumor cell now what is carcinogen these carcinogens are agent that induce carcinogenesis now, now these are few gene which is known as the oncogene. Actually, oncogene is a regulatory gene, and it uh, it is associated with the carcinogenesis. Now, types of there are different types of oncogenes depending on their function. So, first of it is the proto oncogene. Now, proto oncogenes are the norm present in normally in the cell, and they promote the cell growth. Now, another type of oncogene is a tum tumor suppressor, or this is also known as anti-oncogene. Now, this oncogene has a capacity to inhibit cell growth. Third kind of gene is DNA repair gene, and this repairs DNA damage during the mitosis. Now, fourth category is apoptosis mediating gene. Now, these genes regulates program cell death, and thereby it uh, it diverts cells uh, age. Age, aging cell to the uh, su uh, suicidal uh, suicide or the programmed cell death. So this, these are the genes which we, are, we, we will discuss this gene later on in detail. So now let's see what is the mechanism of um, induction of tumor cell and this is known as a carcinogenesis. So here now we are studying at the molecular basis. So as we uh, we have discussed etiology of ca cancer, so there we have found different agents like chemical, even radiation and bi biological carcinogens that is viruses. They when they come contact with a normal cell, they, le uh, they, they causes DNA damage. Now in normal course, this DNA damage, there are the genes which will repair this DNA damage and because of successful DNA repair, this, uh, this cell will be converted into normal cells but there are some uh, sometimes it doesn't happen and what happened uh, and when this will happen there, there is a failure of DNA repair now failure of DNA repair when it, it will happen whenever there is the inherited mutation in two type of gene which are these two gene one is gene which is affected, affecting DNA repair and second gene which is affecting cell growth or apoptosis. When these two genes are um, mutated and they are not functioning properly, then DNA, this DNA is not repaired and it remains damaged. So this DNA damage, again, it leads to the mutation in genome of the somatic cell. 
And now what happened when this mutation occur? Now this mutation may, it can activate growth promoter oncogene and it can alter the genes that regulate apoptosis. So you can see here both time the growth promoting oncogene is, uh, uh, activity of growth promoting oncogene is raised and same time apoptosis gene activity has gone down. So what does it lead? It will lead to unregulated cell proliferation. <coughs> now on another type, even it causes, this mutation will cause inactivation of cancer suppressor gene and this will decrease the rate of apoptosis. So together, uh, both together, it will lead to the malignant transformation of the cell. So this is how, this is the molecular basis of carcinogenesis. Now let's see what are the different carcinogenes. So in that list, first one is the chemical carcinogen. Now this chemical carcinogen acts through the mutation of proto-oncogene and anti-oncogene. Now we have to, again this chemical carcinogen are of two types. One is the initiator carcinogen and another one is the promoter carcinogen. Now initiator carcinogen, actually they are electrophile and they initiate the process of abnormal cell growth. Okay, so these are initiator carcinogen. Now promoter carcinogen, they are not carcinogenic itself. They are not, though they are not carcinogenic itself, they will help initiated cell to grow further. So let's see what is the mechanism of initiated carcinogen first. So this is, we are describing the action of chemical carcinogen or mechanism of chemical carcinogenesis. Okay, so now we are discussing initiator carcinogen. Now initiator carcinogen are again categorized into two types. One is direct carcinogen. Now these direct uh, carcinogens, they do not require metabolic activation. They are reactive electrophiles, uh, uh, files. they are electron deficient uh, chemicals. So they, uh, they, they are itself reactive. Now, another kind of uh, initiator carcinogen, they are known as indirect carcinogen and they are also known as a pro-carcinogen. Now, this pro-carcinogen needs metabolic activation and this metabolic activation, mostly it is taking place in the liver and it needs cytochrome P450 system for its activation. And ultimately, this on activation, this indirect pro-carcinogen is converted into ultimate carcinogen. So now, this uh, we can see both uh, direct and indirect carcinogen, they are converted into reactive electrophil, that means electron deficient compound. As they, uh, these uh, reactive electrophils, they interact with the neutrophil and this neutro, uh, it leads to the damage in the DNA. Now this damage in the DNA, which is, this is a permanent type of damage and it leads to the mutation in the DNA and it is transferred in further cell. So that leads to neoplastic transformation and development of the cancer. Now let's see what are the example of direct carcinogen. Direct carcinogen, it is the methchlorothamine and beta proprion lactose. Tone, these are the direct carcinogen. While indirect carcinogens are even tobacco smoke, then benzidine, inorganic compound like vinyl chloride, asbestos, even nitrosamide compound. The, these compounds are mostly found in the interior of new car and they are also found in the whiskey. So these compounds they act as an indirect carcinogen. So here we have seen the what are the initiator carcinogen and how they act being direct carcinogen and indirect carcinogen. Now let's have a look on what are the promoter carcinogen. We have already described that they are not carcinogenic itself but if cell is initiated then these promoter carcinogen help this initiated cell to proliferate Further, an example of this is the phenol, even phenobarbital, which is used in the uh, anti seizure drug, the saccharine and cyclamate, which are the artificial sweetener, they are also a uh, promoter carcinogen. So, this is this was the action of chemical carcinogen.
Now here is this table shows you different chemical carcinogen which are related to the different occupation and uh, what are the different cancer it produces. So here you can see the ionizing radiation or radon. Uh, it causes carcinoma bronchus in underground minor. Now, uh, radiologists and radiographers, they more often come in contact with X-rays and radium. So, they, they, are, they are also more prone for the development of skin cancer. Now, luminous dial painters, they handle radium more. So, they are also at risk of the development of bone cancer. Then, uh, Farmers and sellers, they are more exposed to ultraviolet radiation of sun and thereby they are also more prone to have skin carbon. Now, polycyclic hydrocarbon in uh, um, suit, black colored. So, chimney sweeper and oil workers, as they clean this uh, chimney with suit, they are more uh, prone to have the carcinoma of the scrotum, screen and bronchus because of this polycyclic hydrocarbon. Now, second naphthalamine and uh, one naphthalamine, these uh, compounds are mostly used in the rubber industry. So, these workers in rubber industry, they are uh, more prone to have the bladder carcinoma. Now, some benzidine and 4-aminophenyl, they, they are again, they will uh, induce bladder carcinoma in chemical workers. Asbestos, it is used mostly in the shipyard and insulation worker and it leads to mesothelioma of lung. Arsenic also used in ship dip manufacture and gold miners and it may lead to the skin and bronchus carcinoma in those workers. Now benzene, uh, it, uh, it is more used with the worker which uh, work with the glue or varnishes and they are uh, they may induce the uh, leukemia in those patients. Now, vinyl chloride is mostly present in the PVC manufacture and it will uh, it may induce the angiosarcoma of liver. Now, here aflatoxin B1. This is mostly found in the storage food. The food, if it is stored in the damp condition, there is increased growth of aspergillus flavors and this aspergillus flavors, it contains aflatoxin B1. You can see they are mostly found in this uh, like uh, ground nuts, rice, all oil seeds. If they are uh, damp and uh, even dried nuts and milk, it can have this. Uh, because why does in, in milk? Because uh, this aspergillus flavors is mostly found in the cattle fodder. So it can enter through the milk and it may lead to the hepatocellular carcinoma. Now, let's discuss the cigarette smoking in detail. Now, WHO had given the uh, slogan that cigarette smoking is injurious to health. Now, why it is? Because if uh, that a person uh, takes 10 cigarettes per, per day, it, it has 15% uh, more chances to have the lung carcinoma. But if it is... Uh, uh, he is taking 20, inhaling 20 cigar, cigarettes per day, then there is a 40% rise in the uh, cigarette see, uh, carcinoma of the lung. Why this is because this uh, cigarette contains nicotine, carbon monoxide and nitrous oxide and even carbon so They are all irritant to the bronchus and they lead to the, uh, they pro, uh, they lead to the proliferation of the cell. Cell, but nowadays it is also found that even the five there are five percent chances to have this is a carcinoma of bronchus in the passive smokers too. So that's why this WHO slogan, which was previously that cigarette smoking is injurious to health, is also now changed to your smoking is injurious to our health. So this is uh, this is how it works. Now one more thing that's development of carcinoma bronchus is is dependent on one enzyme activity which is present in the person. This is known as the GST. Now this is not a uh, good cell tax but this is the glutathione is transferase enzyme. Now when this enzyme is present this will uh, it decreases the uh, bad effect of this nicotine and carbon monoxide on the bronchus. So, in the if the GST levels are good in the person, then their chances to have CA bronchus is reduced. While if GST levels are low, then these uh, these people may uh, they have more chances to suffer from the uh, lung cancer because of this cigarette smoking. So let's move ahead. 
now this is something good good news or uh, something good so you can see this is the background contains all tomatoes even uh, the strawberries uh, berries and green leafy vegetable and all this these compounds are they are protective for the cancers and these are known as anti mutagen this anti mutagen or compound which uh, reduces uh, which inhibit the deleterious effect of mutation and thereby it interferes with the tumor prevention so uh, this example you can see the vitamins this vitamin a it reverses pre cancerous condition even vitamin c it has a protective effect on the pre cancerous condition and vitamin e being the antioxidant effect it uh, it prevent uh, formation of cancer cancer so these all vitamins supplementation will help us to control uh, or prevent the cancerous growth now few uh, food which acts as anti mutagens are low protein or low fat diets generally uh, like tuber bean green leaf vegetable even curcumin which is present in the turmeric uh, and phenolic compounds which are present in grapes strawberry walnut and even green tea they they acts as the anti mutagen because they reduces tumor production even they prevent mutation and they have anti mutagenic activity so that's why these anti mutagens are very helpful to us now let's come to the third type of uh, carcinogen and this is known as a radiant energy we know this is a physical type of carcinogen and you can see the uv radiation this is because of sun rays uh, we get from sun rays and another format of radiation is the ionizing radiation like x ray beta rays or gamma, gamma rays and this ionizing radi radiation and uv radiation both they are mutagenic and carcinogenic how they are mutagenic and carcinogenic because of this radiation causes certain changes in the dna and these are they form purine dimers in dna even they form the apurinic and apyrimidinic site means they take out uh, up Uh, by the deletion of this bases a uh, purine and pyrimidines are taken out of their original site even they lead to the single or double strands of dna or cross linking of the dna and even they produce the free radicals which damage the dna so because of this effect this mutagenic and carcinogenic effect of this radiant energy the the person who are most uh, who are exposed to this uh, radiant energy they are more they have more chances chances to develop skin cancer now let's come to the mechanism of biological carcinogenesis and most of them are viruses even viruses they are known as a biological carcinogen so uh, we know that viruses are of two types they are dna and rna virus so what happened with the uh, viral dna this uh, dna virus this dna virus dna get encarp it get it's attached to the host dna and once it attach it gets incorporated and get integrated with the host dna and um, and this type of uh, dna it is not uh, it uh, it is uh, it it has a altered function and how it act we will see like dna viruses like example adenovirus herpes virus and papillomavirus they alter gene expression of the of this dna and even it an active tuber suppressor gene like p53 and retinoblastoma gene now let's see what are the rna viruses the retrovirus type b and c they are the example of rna virus now the with help of enzyme reverse transcriptase this rna virus synthesize dna in the host cell and this again this dna leads to the synthesis of complementary strand of dna and this double helical dna is known as a pro virus which is synthesized in the host cell now this formation of pro virus leads to deregulation of cell cycle and it leads to inhibition of apoptosis of regulatory gene and it leads to abnormality in the cell signaling pathway and because of all this it leads to the cellular proliferation and ultimately carcinogenesis then hence these viruses are biological 
carcinogen. So let's see few. Uh, what are the few uh, biological carcinogens like human papilloma virus. It is a DNA virus and it is mostly responsible for CA cervix and CA nasopharynx. Epstein Barr virus, it is also a DNA virus and this is from the family of human herpes virus and it is responsible for Burkitt's lymphoma and uh, CA nasopharynx. Now herpes Human herpes simplex virus type 1, this is again DNA virus and it leads to the Kaposi uh, sarcoma which is the blood vessel, uh, increased prolif proliferation of the blood vessels. Now hepatitis B virus, it is again DNA virus and it is responsible for hepatocellular carcinoma. Human T cell leukemia virus type 1, this is the RNA virus and which is which results in the formation of leukemia in children. Hepatitis C is again RNA virus and it leads to hepatocellular carcinoma. So these were the by on oncogenic viruses. Now let's see what is the molecule or what, which are the genes uh, which act during carcinogenesis. So oncogenes, these are the genes which deals with the carcinogenesis and we have different types of genes. So uh, simp uh, one category is the proto-oncogenes. Now proto-oncogenes, these are the normal uh, genes which transcribed or which express the uh, growth factors, even receptors and transcription factor. Now the proto-oncogenes uh, are of two types like viral proto-oncogenes as well as cellular proto-oncogenes. <clears throat> now this proto-oncogene, when it under, undergo any mutation, it will be converted into oncogene. Now oncogene are the gene which can initiate the malignant transformation or which will lead to the tumor formation. So example of oncogene like MYC gene, RAS, ABL and uh, uh, oncogene C. Now how does it happen? How these proto-oncogenes are converted into oncogenes? So this is maybe because of mutation but this it can be a point mutation or deletion of some ba base. It can be a chromosomal translocation or it can be a retrovirus insertion and gene amplification and it is even the regulatory gene insertion and translocation. Now by this process these oncogenes uh, oncogenes leads to the defective expression or this ex, uh, the proteins which are syn uh, which which are synthesized by this oncogene they are mutant protein like that th this myc gene it will lead to the synthesis of dna binding protein while ras gene it leads to the synthesis of p21 ABL leads to the synthesis of tyrosine kinase and the C leads to the formation of GTP binding protein. So these uh, all protein, they are because they are altered, they function in the altered way. So Q protein, they may be truncated protein with loss of the function or it can be normal excess synthesis of normal protein or it can be a synthesis of fusion protein with the loss of regulation and this leads to the altered signaling protein and even it may lead to the increased synthesis of viral protein. So now we in this slide we have discussed what are the different oncogenes. So we have proto-oncogene and oncogene. So now let's See what are the different cellular oncogene which uh, which causes different cancer. Like APL is a Abelson leukemia virus in mouse, and this uh, oncogene product is the tyrosine kinase, and this tyrosine kinase is uh, localized in the plasma membrane. Now or B is the erythroblastosis virus in chicken and this oncogene product is a receptor for epidermal growth factor and this is associated with the membrane. MYC is a myelocytoma mylos, virus in chicken and this is again it leads to the DNA binding protein and hence it works in the nucleus. The C is a simian sarcoma virus in monkey and it leads to the synthesis of platelet derived growth factor and they are again membrane bound. Now, RAS is a rat sarcoma, which again, our product form is a GTPS, and at least it, uh, this product uh, present in the cytoplasm. So here we, uh, we can see the how this oncogene leads to the different product formation, and this product leads to is the altered action. So now let's discuss the different type of third type of 
oncogene. This is known as a tumor suppressor gene. Now, this uh, tumor suppressor gene, this produces the product which suppress normal growth and cell division. Now, let's take an example of P53, which is the very um, essential tumor suppressor gene. It is also called the gatekeeper gene or molecular polyspawn. It is also known as a guardian genome. So mostly this P53, it is found at the short arm of, arm of chromosome 70. And the action of this P50, uh, P53 gene, it leads to the synthesis of phosphoprotein. Now let's see how this phosphoprotein acts. This phosphoprotein, which is synthesized from P53, it suppresses the transformational ability of tumor cell by oncovirus. So it has a protective effect on the uh, against oncovirus. Then another method, uh, this phosphoprotein, in case of severely damaged cell or severe di damaged DNA in the cell, it directs this cell to commit suicide. Means it, uh, to, and it leads to the apop apoptosis. So this is the second mechanism. Now third mechanism, it, it blocks the cell with damaged, uh, damaged DNA and it blocks the cell division of this damaged cell until the repair and it also activates the expression of gene that suppresses cell proliferation so with this four mechanism this p53 it acts as a molecular policeman and it prevents occurrence of cancer and in most of the cancers there is a deletion of this chromosome 17 and that and because of this absence of this p53 it leads to different cancer leukemias even cancer lung colorectal and breast cancer now let's discuss another oncosuppressor gene that is a retinoblastoma gene. Now in normal condition, this retinoblastoma gene, it expresses protein which is PRB and this is nuclear transcription protein and this protein decreases proliferation and uh, proliferation of the cell and prevent the activity of oncogene. Now, whenever in a certain condition, when this retinoblastoma gene is, gene is inhibited, then this uh, synthesis of this nuclear transcription protein is not, uh, it does not, does not occur there and it leads to the proliferation of this oncogene and there is the retino, it appears in the form of retinoblastoma. Now, the another oncogene is a BRCA gene. Now, this BRCA gene is mostly found, it is associated with the breast cancer. So, if the mutation of BRCA gene is found in 5% of breast cancer, but 50% of familiar breast cancers are positive for this BRCA gene. And even it is present in 10 to 15% of ovarian cancer. Other oncosuppressor genes are film tumor, then familial, uh, familial adenomatous adenomatous polyposis, FAP, and deleted in colon cancer. So these are oncosuppressor gene. Now let's have a look on another uh, mechanism which is known as apoptosis. Now this apoptosis is a normal process and this is a programmed cell death or it is also known as a programmed suicide. In normal condition, there, uh, it helps in the elimination of potentially harmful cell or the aging cell. And as it occurs in implantation, then organogenesis, developmental in, uh, in involution and metamorphosis. So in this normal condition, it helps eliminating harmful cell. And this is done with the uh, different enzymes which are secreted. Either mitochondrial enzyme or death receptor pathway is activated and these cells are uh, disintegrated disintegrated and then later cleared from the circulation. Now, another apoptosis in pathological condition, it occurs whenever there is a damaged cell or, or damaged DNA or proteins. And this mostly happens in case of radiation, <coughs> in case of radi radiation or the presence of cytotoxic drug or extreme temperature of hypoxia, which leads to the damage of DNA. And this, uh, and here, now apoptosis is activated with help of growth factor deprivation or P53 protein or apoptosis by the cell mediated lymphocyte. So this, this is a program cell. Now let's see what is a tumor immunology.
Now, immunolo this tumor immunology are the immunological reactions in the tumor bearing host cell. Most of the uh, time, our body produces uh, the um, cytokines, which uh, which try to eliminate this tumor cell. But as this cell grows, they <coughs> they synthesize certain substances which leads to altered immune response. And these substances are there, there is increased level of oncofetal antigen, or if there is a prevention of T cell against the cancer, and this PD1, this is a protein, and this uh, if it is increased in the circulation, this aim indicates that there is immunity break in such patients. So this is the tumor immunology. <coughs> Here, this is an example how antigens are. Mm, synthesize afterward. Like here you can see the embryonic cell. Here this gene is functional which leads to the synthesis of embryonic antigen and these antigens are expressed on the cell. But gradually in adulthood this, uh, this gene got repressed. It is not active at that time and hence because gene is inactive these antigens are also not expressed. But what happened in malignant cell? Because of altered immune reaction, this gene got de-repressed, means it become active again. And this because of active gene, there is uh, again synthesis of embryonal antigen, which is re-expressed on the tumor cell. And these are the malignant cell. So we can use this uh, detection of this embryonal antigen to detect the um, progress uh, to diagnose the malignancy or to see the progress of the disorder. So like AFP, it is uh, diagnosed, it, uh, AF, uh, AFP is alpha fetoprotein, it is used in the diagnosis of hepatoma, while carcinoembryonic antigen, it is used in the diagnosis of colon cancer. Now let's come to the la uh, last part, but very important part, that is a tumor marker. Now, tumor markers, these are usually protein which are produced from the cancer cell or the, these are the proteins which are produced as a response to the cancer. Okay, so these are the protein which can either produce by cancer cell itself or these are produced by the host cell as a response to the cancer. Now, this can be a cancer specific or tissue specific. So, an ideal tumor marker should be, it should be highly specific. For the given tumor type. So it, uh, it should not include other tumors. Then it should provide a lead time over clinical diagnosis. So before lump appear, we should able to diagnose the presence of cancer and it should be highly sensitive to avoid false positive results. So these are, uh, an, uh, these are an ideal tumor marker. So in oncology, tumor markers are used or their significance is that they are used as a screening tool. Like uh, the prostate specific antigen is used for screening of prostatic cancer in elderly population. Even it is used in monitoring and follow up, uh, follow up like hepatocellular carcinoma. It can be monitored and follow up with the <coughs> concentration of alpha fetoprotein. It is also used in the diagnosis when biopsy is not feasible. This, if these tumor markers are positive, positive those we can predict them. Even these are used to determine progress, uh, prognosis of the disorder, whether the cells, are, the tumor is removed uh, wholly or not and uh, its prognosis. It can be judged with help of the levels of tumor markers. So let's see what are the different tumor markers. So first of its category, these are oncofetal antigen. We have already discussed those. So this is alpha fetoprotein, which are which are used to diagnose hepatocellular carcinoma. Uh, second is a carcinoembryonic antigen, which are used to diagnose colorectal and stomach cancer. Now another category is the hormones. Now few tumors are secrets hormone. So calcitonin is used for the uh, diagnosis of medullary carcinoma of thyroid. Even growth hormone can be used for diagnosis of uh, carcinoma of pituitary. Parathyroid hormone are used for the diagnosis of the liver cell carcinoma. Prolactin is again it is used for adenoma of pituitary and beta SCG, the human coronary gonadotropin, they are used for the diagnosis of teratoma of testes and choriocarcinoma. Now there are few carbohydrate markers. Actually, these are protein. So like 
carcino, uh, carcinogenic antigens, CA125, they are used for the diagnosis of ovarian, uh, ovarian carcinoma. While CA4, 4, 5, sorry, CA549, they are used to diagnose breast carcinoma. Now, proteins, further proteins like beta macroglobulin, it is used to diagnose multiple myeloma because this cell secretes this beta macroglobulin. Now, C peptide is a part of insulin, and this C peptide is used to diagnose insulin insulinoma, which is the uh, uh, tumor of pan, uh, pancreas. Now, ferritin is may be used to diagnose the liver cancer, and even immunoglobulin can be used to detect multiple myeloma. Now coming to few enzymes which can act as a tumor marker. So amylase can be act as in the pancreatic diseases. Even alkaline phosphatase can act as a uh, marker in the carcinoma of bone and liver. And prostatic acid phosphatase, it is used to monitor the prostate carcinoma in PAC. Even LDH is used uh, to uh, diagnose the pres uh, presence of leukemia. Now let's come to some anti-cancer drug. So these anti-cancer drugs, they are cytotoxic drugs and they are targeted towards the cancerous cell. So as we know that is folic acid, it acts as a nourishment for the tumor cell. So this methotrexate is the folic acid analog and it's uh, it inhibit the enzyme to uh, which synthesize folic acid and thereby these uh, cells are devoid of nutrition and they die so this is methotrexate now six mercaptopurine and six thiogonin they are the purine ana analog and they can get incorporated in this cell and they can le lead to the death of this uh, cancerous cell now, mitomycin C and actinomycin, these are again antibiotic, which can, uh, can be targeted toward the uh, anti-cancer, uh, anti sorry, which can be targeted towards the cancer cells too. Now, wing plastic and wing crystalline, these are alkaloid, they act as an anti-cancer drug. And even cisplatin is a platinum compound, but it acts as an anti-cancer drug. So here we have come to the end of our lecture, that is the biochemistry of cancer. And you have to remember that this applied aspect and clinical uh, implication, like understanding etiology of cancer is helpful. Help, it helps in the, the chemical uh, to synthesize synthetic nucleotide analog, which can act as an anti-tumor agent or antiviral agent. So again, coming to the uh, tumor, uh, what are the questions which are most likely asked, like the tumor marker, proto-oncogene, and biochemical changes in the cancer. Now let's summarize. Uh, these are the resources from which this material is taken, the Har Harper Illustrated Biochemistry 8th edition, the textbook of biochemistry 5th edition, Pankaja Naik, and textbook of biochemistry 8th edition, Vasudeva and Shri Kumari. So here, uh, I would like to summarize again that cancer, uh, what we have studied, the can cancer is uncoordinated, uh, abnormal, excessive, autonomous growth. It has multifactorial etiology, then uh, it, uh, etiology and there are carcinogenesis. The main carcinogens are a chemical carcinogen, then uh, radiant energy and biological carcinogen, that is the viruses. We have discussed the what is the uh, mechanism of uh, molecular, uh, molecular mechanism of carcinogenesis and then we have also discuss the different genes. The genes which deal uh, in the cancer, they are known as oncogenes and they are the proto-oncogene, uh, which, uh, which is eligible for uh, pro proto-oncogene, which can be converted into oncogene. And even uh, there is a tumor suppressor gene we have discussed. And lastly, we have discussed what are the tumor marker and how they are used in the diagnosis of different disorder. So here we have come to the end of this can. Uh, cancer, biochemistry of cancer and uh, thank you so much for patient, uh, patient listening. If you have any, uh, any queries, please do contact me and please uh, do like, share and subscribe this channel for more such lectures and videos. Thank you so much.